In today's tutorial, we're going to deal with this particular hypnotic animation and we're also going to deal with a few other variations just to make something that looks uh, visually appealing. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Let's open up a default scene on Blender and then delete the default cube, add in a plane and scale it by some arbitrary amount, maybe 10 will do. Take the camera, hit Alt-R to clear rotation and Alt-G to clear the position. Then grab it on the Z-axis and move it up. And then hit 0 to go into the camera view. Let's select the camera and then go to the camera settings and change the focal length to 25 millimeters. And also in the viewport display, change passport out to 1 so that we see only the camera. We can also move the camera by hitting N, view, and hitting camera to view. And then if we just zoom out, we can get an area that the entire plane fills the camera's view. So now let's delete the light source and then start with the material for the plane. Let's go into the rendered view and then go to the materials and add a new material. Let's shift this over to create a new window and then change this to the shader editor window. Tap N to remove that side panel and then hit Shift A and add in a Voronoi texture. So now let's change this Voronoi texture to 4D and then put the distance through a color ramp. So let's search for color ramp factor and place that right here. And then we can change this from linear to constant and pull this back. Now let's hit Control shift click this to view what we're seeing. So the Voronoi texture gives us these nice round circles. Now each of these circles, we would want some type of smaller rings to be formed in it. So we can actually do that by adding in a simple wave texture in the Voronoi texture like that. So right there, we have our waves within the Voronoi texture. These waves seem to have way too many for my liking. So let's scale it down to maybe three and that looks great. Now, just by animating this W texture, so let's shift A and add in a value node. Now, right click this and click add driver and then change the expression from variable plus zero to frame plus zero. And we can also remove all of this and there we go. So now when we actually play the animation, we should be able to see this number update with the frame number, which it clearly isn't doing. Oh, it is. Now it is. So now we can place this value into the W, but that will be too fast. So let's divide it first. So we'll do shift A and add in a math node and change it from add to divide. And then we can take this value, place it here and divide it by maybe five or 300. Then we take the value and put it into the W. And then when we play the animation, we see the very hypnotic style animation. And now all we have to do is take this and instead of putting it into the view, put the color into the emission and then select the principled BSDF and then go to the world settings and change the color all the way down to black. Once you have this, you could literally render this out, maybe change it to whatever length you want. So I would say have it as 300 frames at 30 frames per second. That's what I generally prefer. But you could directly render this out to get a nice hypnotic video. However, there's still a lot more that we could do to this. Of course, you can change a few of these things to your liking and then maybe just have it something like this, or you could also do it the other way around where you have very little white and things like that. So all of this is just personal preference. Now let's go ahead and create something a little bit more visually appealing. So let's take this camera, zoom in a bit and maybe rotate it so that we're at some sort of an angle. And then zoom in, maybe rotate a bit, zoom in, rotate a bit, zoom in, rotate a bit. And there we go. So I think this looks pretty cool. Let's have these white lines 
be even thinner. But instead of having just this white line, let's add in different colors to this. So you could choose a color combination that you like. But for now, I'm going to have this middle color be this kind of a blue and this be this sort of a pink. All right, now let's just reduce this blue even further and increase the pink a little bit. Once we have these colors in place, let's make sure that the black becomes see-through. So let's go to the materials property and change the blend mode to alpha clip, to change the shadow mode to none, and then take this color ramp, shift D to duplicate it, and then change this to white by reducing the saturation to zero. And then we can literally remove this. And now we can take the color, place this in here, and take this color and put it into the alpha. Now, if we remove this, it's actually see-through, although the world itself is black, and that's why it seems black. But if you just increase the world a little bit, you can clearly see that we're seeing through the material. So let's keep our world back at black and then hit Shift A and add in a new plane. Let's make sure that we can see it and then just scale it up and also grab it on the z-axis by a little bit and just scale it up some more. Now let's give that some material. Let's go down here and just make it a lot more metallic and a lot less rough. Then let's go to our properties and go to our screen space reflections and select it. And now we can actually see these stuff reflect down on this plane. So the plane seems to be a little bit too far below. So let's just grab it on the z-axis and move it lower. Or let's move, let's select the ground plane, which is plane 001, and then grab and move it up on the z-axis by just a bit. About that looks good. So now what you could do is you could actually take this plane, shift D to duplicate it on the z-axis, move it up by just a tiny little bit, and then also scale it down by a tiny little bit. Then you could just shift D, Z, tiny little bit, and then scale it down tiny little bit. And there you go. Now when you play this animation, you get something that looks so much trippier than before. Now over here, a few things that I'd still like to do is first switch on bloom, increase the emission strength to maybe two, zoom into this particular section and reduce the pink by a bit. Yeah reduce this as well by a bit. And then let's control click right here and add in maybe a slightly darker color. Let's zoom back out and then lift it up and add in this nice little dark blue-ish, I guess. So yeah, of course, remember that since we added in a color further back, we also need that to be seen. So we have to change our alpha mat accordingly. So there. But this works perfectly. And now we can watch this sort of a cool trippy animation. Now this plane, which is our ground plane, plane 001, can actually rename this to ground. We can change the roughness value based on some noise. So just add in a noise texture and then put this color into the roughness value. Obviously, do shift A to add in a color ramp and then decrease the black almost all the way. Change the scale from 5 to maybe 10. Or let's actually control shift click this so that we can view it. All right, yeah. So the scale has to be made a lot more. Yeah, I think this looks good. And now 
control shift click this and we should have something fairly cool there you go so now all you have to do is make sure that you have the correct outputs selected change the file format to ffmpeg video change the encoding to mpeg4 and the output quality to perceptually lossless then you can just render the animation